Friends, welcome to today's video in which we are going to be looking at phase two of your practical assessment task, or as we like to call it, the pet, the dreaded pet, uh, the one that you all hate to love. But anyway, um, so we're going to look at this now, and we've we've now finished phase one, so you should be well on your way with that. You've got everything in that folder. Now we're looking at what you need to do for phase two. So for phase two, they want some electronic copies of your sources, some web pages. You're looking at a word processing document. That's the exact same one that you used for phase one, but you're now going to copy it into your phase two folder. Um, and we need to make some changes to that. Then we need a questionnaire. There's got to be a subfolder with the completed questionnaires and a declaration of authenticity. But that's that's all in this document. Okay, um, I will in the description below put the link to the pet document again. Okay, just for those who didn't get it in phase one. All right, now you'll see you've also got to do a spreadsheet um, and a report and then your final declaration. So um, just on that, I'm just going to go down here to the bottom to the annexes. You'll see here is um, an example of questionnaire questions. So they do want you to create a questionnaire that you're supposed to give out. I think you would have done this in phase one already. But this is something, uh, just an example of what it should look like. I'm going to give you another one here. There's another just typical example of what the questionnaire should look like. You can see we don't have a lot of questions. You don't need many. Okay, You probably only need five for the most. Um, and then just somewhere where the person can enter their details. Right. Then we move to Annexure B. So Annexure B is just a style guide for your word processing documents. So what you can and can't do in terms of headings, body text, page layout. Annexure C gives you the framework of the research document itself. So as we've done, we've, had, we've got a cover page, we've got a contents page, we've got our task definition. Um, these three over here, these are the tables with their own headings and the questions. Now, they can all be on one page. That's fine. Um, you can put it on three different pages. That's also okay. Your bibliographical information, this is where you're going to have those second or that second set of um, tables where you are now evaluating the sources that you've listed there. Um, addendum A will be the page after your bibliography with a smart art diagram of your folder structure. And then addendum B will be the table with your research investigative questions. Okay, so you basically in your phase two folder, you are going to have one document as a questionnaire, the completed ones. You're going to have another document that is going to be your report. And then you're going to have your spreadsheet. Let's go down and next year D. This needs to be completed. So this has to be printed and completed as your final declaration of authenticity. And yeah, I think that's all in terms of the annexures. Okay, so let's go and look at what's needed. Let's go into some detail. Let's look at the report. Now, remember the report is going to be the exact same document that you used in phase one. You're going to copy it into your phase two folder. From there, they just reminding you again, You've already got a title page. Don't worry about it. You've already got a contents page. You've already got all these things. What you now need to add um, are these three items here. So you need a heading for finding and recommendations, um, a heading for conclusion, and a heading for list of references. Okay. Here they tell us with finding and recommendations, provide findings slash recommendations that clearly and effectively address the original problem. So um, you can use your graphs that you're going to uh, create in phase two. Um, you can just take screenshots of those and put it under your findings and recommendations. Just put a little caption underneath as to what it is indicating. The conclusion, you need to have a probably a three-line conclusion. So just about three sentences, um, giving your conclusion to everything that has been presented. And then we're also going to have a list of references right at the end when it comes to you know whatever sources you've been using documents anything like that okay yeah they tell us the information you need should be found in the summary documents you created in phase one okay so just take note of that as well so let's go and look at an example okay so like i said 
there, first of all, there's our example of a questionnaire. Um, and all you're gonna do is you're gonna create a document with a questionnaire layout like this that is around 10 pages because you need at least 10 completed questionnaires. Uh, sometimes it is a bit more. And then people can just fill it in from here. Please note that these are content controls, right? You need to have the developer tab open in order to pop in a content control um, so people can just select, you know, whether they're male, female, whatever the case is over there. All right, let me close that. Then once you've done the questionnaire, you need to turn the questionnaire into a spreadsheet. And this is just a very, very simple one. Okay, so here you can see our headings are the questions that we've had, right? Those questions come from the questionnaire that you created. And then we just pop in all the relevant info, in other words, the answers. So what's also important here is whatever questions you put in in the questionnaire, make sure that they are simple, yes or no, um, true or false questions, or, you know, just, just simple things that you can actually extract data from, okay? Here is, I've got another one here that's a bit more complex. There you can see um, that's a much bigger one. A lot more info. There's a lot more formatting done to that as well. That tab that this info is in must be named data. Then you need to have another tab called graphs. And they want you to pop in any two graphs of your choice. So you can decide you know, what you actually want. Um, here, for example, this one's dealing with methods of water purification, and this one is dealing with the number of people that own a system. Okay, so there are our two graphs. So remember, you'll now take a screenshot of this and actually add it to that phase one working document. So I'm just going to go to this phase one working document. Here you can see cover page, table of contents, the focus question and it has been answered for grade 10 you don't have to answer it. and they, they do give you the, the focus question as well here are our um, questions so there you can see big table this learner decided to do it this way and they've got the question you don't need this you don't need the category so your first three tables remember it's just the number the question and the source then when you do the second set this has to be added so you can have a table um, that has these items in there, okay? Only three. That is just to give you an idea of what you need to, to do over there. Okay, so I'm going to give you another example. There's another one that created a questionnaire. Put it into PDF format, actually, so that you can go and do that. In fact, I'm sure you'd be able to use a Google form as well. Uh, you just put that into PDF over there. Uh, as long as you can extract the information, I know with a Google form, um, you can export it to a CSV file. In other words, um, you know, bringing it through to an Excel file, and then you can work with it from there. So if you want to do it that way, um, you know, that's that's also fine. But they do require that you have a Word document uh, for the questionnaire. Okay, here's another simple questionnaire, and you can see I can go and click in there. Know, just to put my X in and tick that. Okay, so remember now, for phase two, first things first, you're creating the questionnaire, you're completing the questionnaires. Once you've done that, you're going to turn that into a spreadsheet. Here you can see again, another simple one. You're going to have two tabs. So one is going to say data and the other one is going to say uh, graphs. So you're going to have your data on one and your graphs on the other. And then you've just got to have those declarations as well. Remember the declarations in the annexure. You've got to add those in. So you'll have to probably print that out and sign that as well. But that is basically it, grade 10s for phase two. Let me just go through the rubric with you. Again, you can see the spreadsheet, the layout. So you get marks for that. Um, how technical it is, you know, in terms of what you've done, putting borders and shading. The quality, or, you know, what does it look like? What is it showing you? And on the graphs as well. And then they give you marks for the complexity within the spreadsheet. Have you used any formulas? So let me actually go back here. Just 
see what I can find. So here, for example, um, see if there are any formulas in here. Don't think this one. So once you've got this, you can, for example, put in a formula, you know, over here to count the number of males. Uh, or to count the number of females, or to count the number of people who do own a water purification system or don't. Uh, but they obviously do want to see that, and you get marks for that as well. So just um, make a note of that. All right, then with your report, you just want to see that you've got a title, intro, you've got headings, you've got a conclusion, you've got a reference. Um, they want to you know, give you marks for the general appearance, how it's been organized, Right, so not using a whole lot of different types of fonts and colors and these type of things. Have you used any graphics? Have you used any smart art? Again, you get marks for all of those things. Um, does the information demonstrate a good understanding of everything? Have you put in an, an argument right, uh, relating to the actual topic? Then they just give you some marks on some general aspects. The fact that you've got everything in place and if you actually met the deadline. And if you did that, there's a couple of extra marks as well from the teacher. Uh, the teacher will just evaluate, you know, how you've actually been <laughs> working on this, whether it's be during class or meeting the deadlines. Um, but all of this is there. And that'll give you the total of uh, 16 marks over there. Okay. So, great tens. I hope this is going to help you with phase two. And that will be the end of your pet.